Hello everyone. So today let's take a look at Kling AI's latest update features. The new version 1.6 from Kling AI has improved video quality significantly, as you can see here in some example content. Of course, some of these examples aren't running on version 1.6 on their showcases, but they still provide lots of inspiration for how you can use AI videos to generate animations with anime styles, fantasy styles, or hyper-realistic 3D styles. There are also examples using human characters, animating them with their own storytelling video scenes. So let's take a look at what the latest features in Kling AI are. The Elements feature is right here. As you can see on the dashboard, you click on Image to Videos and then select Elements. Previously, the Frame section represented Image to Video Generation, where you could use two images, a start frame and an end frame to create video interpolations. But now, when you click on the Elements tab, you'll see four image upload panels where you can upload your own images or try out their templates. For instance, there's a template of a cat wearing sunglasses standing on a stage with a leather jacket. There's also a prompt here showing you how to use multiple objects, characters, or elements to mix and match and generate new video scenes. This is similar to what we've done before in image generation using tools like IP adapters or Flux Redux, but this is more dynamic. As you can see here, I have an example of a beautiful lady sitting on a sofa, holding a glass of wine, and then standing up to walk toward the camera. This is very simple. I'm using one image as the main theme here. A lady sitting on a sofa in a cyber-futuristic tunnel-style setting. Then I have a glass of wine which is a stock image used as a reference object. Here, as you can see, I'm not highlighting the full size of the image. If you use the full size, it would look like this. But when I upload it, I can set the dimensions of the image as a reference. The Elements feature mostly requires a focus on specific objects. So they've created a chopped image feature that allows you to resize the regions you want the AI to focus on. In this case, I'm focusing on the woman and the sofa as the main objects, and then we can use text prompts to instruct the AI on how to animate the video scenes, like the one I'm showing here in the panel. It goes really smoothly with Kling AI version 1.6. You can see there's no deformation of the characters or objects. It's very easy to handle now thanks to Kling AI's latest AI model engine, which animates characters and objects in video seamlessly. The best part is that this feature allows you to mix and match different objects within the video animations. You can build entire video scenes within this panel. As we've experienced with image to video generation before, it's sometimes hard to add new objects to image frames while creating videos using just text prompts. For example, in this case, trying to create a bottle or glass of wine purely through text prompts might not give you the exact glass of wine you want in the video scene. The good thing here is that we have reference objects, like the glass of wine, which looks exactly how I expected it to. This results in very smooth AI video generation. In terms of consistency, it's not a problem anymore. As I've mentioned in previous videos, the latest AI video tools on the market can handle consistency well, but the coherence of objects and how they perform in AI videos is something Kling AI version 1.6 has improved significantly. You can also use multiple objects as elements within the scenes. For example, in this case, I have a unicorn, an elf, and forest. The unicorn is walking, the girl is riding the unicorn, and they're moving along a path of forest. Yeah, so as you can see here, these are all the objects we're using as the three elements in this video. Just by referencing these, the AI is able to generate a mix and match video scene based on the text prompt descriptions of how we want to use those elements. Now I have some newly generated videos here as well. This is another example that looks really cool. Imagine having multiple characters in your AI videos, AI stories, or just in general. Many people are creating music videos using AI and you can have two characters. For example, I have a guy here. This is an image from Mike that he generated and it looks like a pirate. Then there's a senior female warrior. I also have a beach landscape image that I generated previously. So I mixed and matched these three elements together and added a text prompt at the bottom. A pirate man and a senior female warrior holding hands, walking on the beach, chatting. After they talk, they give each other a hug. And there we have it. The exact same motions and storyline that the AI video generated for me.
Of course, there are some minor issues like the hands and a few deformations, like when the pirate man puts his hands here. There's still room for improvement, but if we don't use that two second clip, we can just chop it off for our video story. We can use the first five seconds, like in this case, and it looks very nice. Here's another example I just generated. I haven't reviewed or looked at it yet. It's two ladies walking in a haunted house, and there should be a ghost or dark entity behind them. But I think 10 seconds isn't enough time to render too much detail, so I shouldn't have put such a long text prompt here. Still, the two ladies from the beginning of the text prompt were produced well, and the background, using this haunted house I generated in Flux, created the environment nicely. The outfits of the two ladies were also generated using the same method. This is the second try for this video scene, and I use two generations, so one generation produces two AI videos for me to choose from. It looks pretty cool in this one. And then there's another one I generated, which is another cool thing you can do. In some cases, like in AI video movies, you might want to generate scenes with multiple characters. Again, I have a guy wearing a survival outfit like this, a woman in a close-up portrait image, and a background of a UFO or alien city that looks like this. I mixed and matched these together with a text prompt. A guy holding two tomahawks as an apocalypse survivor walking in a collapsed city. A UFO in the sky is monitoring the area. An old woman follows the man searching for a safe space. Here, the AI was able to produce something following my prompt instructions, and it turned out very nice. At the end of the video, there's a few seconds where it looks like they're going into another tunnel or indoor view. This was generated by the AI, even though I didn't provide it in the initial background scenes of the collapsed city. The AI was able to understand the elements from the images we input and reproduce the same style or overall background. If you mention in the text prompt that this is the background or the setting, Kling AI 1.6 can reproduce the same environment. Even the UFO in this scene matches the reference image I provided. The AI also added its own creativity, generating more elements in the environment, like this tunnel, some smoke, and broken houses on the ground. It's really impressive. And then there's this old lady. She has her own story. This is another feature video I generated using her. She had a very good life before, and she has a beautiful house like this. She also has a classical music player that she loves to play music on. We've got a very cozy and relaxed scene where she's holding a glass of wine, standing up, walking around, and dancing in her living room. Again, all the elements in these videos, like the background of the living room, are produced based on the image I provided. Of course, the classical music player is clearly visible in the corner of the living room. And the lady here is the same person. She's happy in her life, living in her beautiful house. Another example I have is a queen. This woman, I named her a queen, is actually from another AI-generated image. I found this sword in Kling AI's example elements, and I'm using it as a reference. She's holding the sword in her living room because she's gone crazy, running around her bedroom like this. It's like those cinematic movies where kingdoms collapse and the queen loses her mind. Of course, there are other ways you can use Kling AI 1.6's elements, like for fashion styles. I think this can be really beneficial for e-commerce businesses. For example, you can use a hallway or stage like this and showcase your e-commerce fashion dresses. I have a flower dress like this, and I'm using a model for a virtual try-on. I've also added accessories like a crystal crown on her head. Here's the example. This is a virtual try-on, and we don't need to do extra image generation for it. It's just one process. Upload the character, the outfit, the background, and some accessories, and we're able to combine all four elements into one video scene. This is my first try using Kling AI's Elements feature. The scene shows a girl on stage wearing a fashionable flower dress with a crystal crown, confidently walking and looking at the camera for a fashion show. This way we're not just limited to the background without any people like in the reference image I have for the stage. By using the prompts, I told the AI this is a fashion show and the AI is smart enough to add more elements like an audience in the background and a runway. It looks very good this way. You can also instruct the AI to have the girl walk down a hallway, turn around and do a 360 degree spin to showcase the dress. This would be helpful for e-commerce businesses as a product demo. Whether it's jeans, pants, or a jacket, you can do the same. Just replace the elements in the upload panel. One process can unlock a lot of creativity for businesses.
The benefit of Kling AI's elements, as I see it, is that sometimes it's hard to generate images for specific scenes. For example, in the first scene here, I already have three elements, the character, the background, and the sword. I don't have to spend extra time generating start frames for the image and then bringing those frames into an image to video workflow. That was the old way of doing it even in other AI video generators. You had to use the image to video method to create your video, but now we can just use the elements feature and trigger the video creation with text prompts. This saves a lot of time and allows for more creative freedom in generating different kinds of video scenes. So. Let's try out a fresh video creation together in this video. To do that, I'm going to erase all these elements and start fresh. For example, I have an alien. I'll drag that into the first element upload panel. You can adjust the settings of the chopped image to focus more on the alien instead of the background. This way, it will perform better in Kling AI. Then I have a superwoman. Again, we can focus more on the superwoman like this. And then I have a background of an urban city street, which I've uploaded here. For the background, I don't recommend chopping or resizing the focus area. Instead, I suggest using the full size of the image. This allows the AI to recognize the style of the background and render additional regions as the video rolls and the angle changes. This way, we can start creating prompts and building movie scenes. So, I have a text prompt like this, just a very simple basic one. We don't need very complex, long-form text prompts for Kling AI because this AI model is smart enough to understand what you want with just a few sentences. It has enough data to create animations. Here, my text prompt says, A woman wearing a superwoman costume is fighting with an alien on the street. This way, we're able to identify two elements in the upcoming generated video. Then, we'll instruct the AI. The alien smashes the woman onto the roof of a car. The car in the background of this image will be identified and will have an explosion on the street. This means we're creating extra motion based on the background and maybe some explosions will pop up at the end of the video. Let's try that here. We'll set the dimensions and the duration. I suggest 10 seconds to give the motion enough time to render. Then we can click generate and wait for the result. One thing I should mention is that the elements feature takes longer to render. Earlier, it took about 10 minutes, but now it might take 20 minutes or more. There are a lot more users trying out this feature since Kling AI released it publicly. Last week, when I tried this and posted examples on x.com, it only took about 10 minutes to render. But now, with more users, it's taking longer. I think the longer render time is because you have multiple elements that the AI needs to understand. It feels like you're temporarily training the AI based on your embedded data, so of course, it needs more time to process and render your video. We'll wait and come back to see how the result looks. Okay, we've got the video generated. As you can see, there's Superwoman and the alien here. The alien looks a bit different in this video. They've used some different colorations for it, but overall, we've got the three elements combined, Superwoman, the alien, and the street environment. We also have the car in front of Superwoman. Then. There's a nasty move where the alien attacks from behind and the car explodes. However, there's some morphing at the end of the video that I don't like. It seems like there's an AI context handling issue. It didn't do well at the end. Here, where Superwoman is flying up, it feels like the AI tried to render the alien holding her body in the air, but it couldn't complete that task in the last three seconds. And here is the second try with this three elements. It looks better with another seed and modify prompt. I also have another example, just want to mention, using elements, don't put too many complex instructions in the text prompts. If you have three to four images, it starts getting hard to handle with multi-actions in one text prompt. For example, in this case, I have a woman with a background of a futuristic tunnel. I tried to ask the AI to only use the character, not the tunnel, but sometimes it can't fully control that and ends up using other backgrounds for the scene. In this case, the first two seconds are okay, but then it starts transitioning into a different background, like Santorini. I don't like that morphing transition. I hope it would look like the woman walking forward with the camera orbiting or panning to another view of the background. That would be a better way to present the video.
So if you have more than three or four images as elements, you need to handle it carefully. Don't overload the text prompt with too many instructions. Keep it simple and it will go smoother. So yeah, that's it for the video. Overall, I like it. The Kling AI 1.6 Elements feature in the Image to Videos module is a very nice update from Kling AI. You guys can try it out if you have a Kling AI account. I'll see you guys in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.